Hello and welcome back to the Gipton War Room. It's British versus Germans. It's Normandy 1944. We're enlarging the bridgehead at St Manvu Le Pesnel. Right, I'd just like to start as always uh, by thanking everyone who's um, watched, liked uh, and subscribed to my videos. It's very much appreciated uh, and hopefully um, as, as I'm going on the more I do they are um, they are getting better and I am trying to improve um, all the time and again your comments and critique take them on board and I try and work with it uh, and hopefully uh, the videos will be uh, will be getting better right on to tonight's battle okay just a quick um, once over the table uh, for terrain because I often get quite a lot of comments asking me uh, these buildings that you can see here they're all um, scratch built just made from um, extruded polystyrene so quite dense polystyrene um, cut out plastic card for roof uh, card for the, um, uh, the, the the slates the rubble pieces that have come round again these are just it's just polystyrene that's actually just cut to shape with some of the off cuts from the buildings that I've used when I've been using the hot glue gun sticking them on um, and then obviously just putting them round the rubble this is you can buy it it's, it's like decorative um, little bits of, of, of wood chippings that, that come in the bag I buy these uh, and just spray them so they're then quite handy to throw around just to, to give an added effect of, of, of debris in the street. Quite light, they don't mark your table, um, they come in quite handy. The roads that you can see, again, these are the um, carpet road system that I do, as is the woods that you will see uh, in the game as well. These buildings here, these are the uh, Warlord um, plastic uh, farm ruin ones and again all I've done is stick a few of them together stick them on a base uh, put some sand and rubble around and sprinkle some of the um, wood chips that, that I've already mentioned the fields that you can see uh, they're just the coloured um, A4 felt that you can buy at craft shops and again just put these down put them cover the edges up and they, they, they give the impression of fields Lichen, just buy that in big bags the trees that I've got, these are all um, woodland scenics that I then just put rubberized horsehair on, uh, spray them, uh, paint them, do the bases, and then uh, just put some flock on top. The bocage pieces, these are again made from polystyrene, um, just onto MDF um, bases, covered in either polyfiller um, or, or um, some sort of paste, sprayed. Uh, painted, put some flock on, rubberized horsehair, put a little bit of tree in and again just stick some uh, flock on and the jobs are good. The model tanks that you're going to see in this video, uh, they're all uh, Rubicon. Uh, I think the 88 is actually a plastic uh, Warlord Italeria kit. I often get asked questions about, or people put comments on about basing tanks. Um, these are just, these are my tanks and obviously they're on a bit of plastic card and, and some um, Polyfiller at the rear, giving the impression of tracks um, with some uh, some flock and that round it. However, they are magnetic. There's a little magnet under, a little wash under there and a magnet there. So that when they're on the fields, they can be like that. And when I remember, when they're on the roads, take them off. So you kind of get best of both worlds. The figures that I'm uh, using in this video uh, are predominantly the plastic warlord ones. I'm also using some metal artisan uh, for some of the German figures. Um, I've also got some Crusader um, British uh, metals in there, again, for the, for the mortars, and a few um, metal uh, British Warlord figures as well. I've been asked about my um, the, the, the burning uh, explosion markers. These are actually made from a um, putting cotton wool or epoch around uh, one of the little uh, battery-operated tea lights. Once you've stuck it around with some hot glue or something like that, just be careful with your fingers because it does burn. Uh, spray it with black just uh, around but not too much just so you can see some of the white and it turns it, it grey and then black as well and then when you turn the tea light candle on you can see the flame inside there it just gives the impression um, of flickering flame um, inside also on this video I'm using smoke markers again it's just um, it's cotton wool epoch but stuck to Pringles bases uh, the three inch across which is quite handy uh, and they're quite good for placing on the table giving um, a, a clear uh, size guide as well okay this uh, this battle is a, a follow-on uh, of the tank attack at St Manvu farm by the 25th Lancers and Oakwood Rangers of the 1st Armour Brigade the German units defending there including the 90th Grenadier Infantry Regiment seem to have pulled back in some disarray giving the British the impression of a collapse in German line when elements of the 37th Infantry Brigade caught up with the British tanks positioned around St Manvu Farm, 
General Staff at 48 Division HQ believed the Germans had uh, pulled back beyond the village of St Manville de Pesnel, approximately a third of a mile behind the farm and crossroads, now controlled by the British forces there. Division HQ believed the Germans had done this to straighten the line of defence, leaving only stragglers behind. Seizing the initiative, orders are quickly sent to the 37th Infantry Brigade to push on with whatever forces were available to occupy and fortify St Manville de Pesnel, expanding the bridgehead area in doing so. The 2nd Battalion, Duke of Gipton Regiment, which is the 2nd Battalion of the Brigade, is the only full unit in a position to move without delay. The battalion has not been fully in action before, and this will be its first battalion attack. The plan is for the battalion to advance with B Squadron 25th Lancers in support, as well as extra mortar support from the 1st Battalion Round of Fusiliers. Divisional artillery is on hand for support, and will be providing a preparatory bombardment prior to the advance. The attack will begin at 05.30 hours. The German forces, however, far from being in disarray, have pulled back in some order and occupy parts of the village and woods and are digging in. In true German fashion, they are planning an imminent counter-attack with the 1st Battalion, 15th Panzer Grenadier Regiment, supported by Panthers from the 2nd Company of the 12th Panzer Regiment, are rushing to reinforce the 90th Grenadier and 1st Flak Battalion, hoping to arrive at around 06.30 hours, and then to counter-attack the British at St Manville Farm. The Germans will be set up 12 inches in from this table edge all the way down. There are two parts to St Manville, each building that's occupied by a unit is worth one victory point. The British will begin from anywhere on the far table edge. The Germans will begin with eight units on the table in defence. Then on turn three, a further seven units will arrive as reinforcements, making 15 in total. The British will begin the attack with a total of 18 units at their disposal that they can bring on in the first wave or in subsequent turns. Crucially, both sides will only have 12 order dice. So not every unit can be given an order. Further victory points are one point for every unit destroyed and if that unit that's destroyed has an order dice assigned to it that turn, that side loses an order dice. Okay, the battlefield then. Buildings are hard cover and block line of sight. Bocage are hard cover and block line of sight. The woods are soft cover and block line of sight, but not if you're in them. You can see out and then you can be seen in. Dug in defensive works are hard cover. The lichen and fields that you can see do not provide soft cover. Um, they're there for the aesthetic uh, of the game. Roads can be passable with vehicles even though there is debris on them but the sections of road where there are debris it will count as rough ground. The woods passing through the woods will also count as rough ground for vehicles moving. Okay the Germans are all veterans. We have Lieutenant Muller and two men SMG, two rifles. First company is one SMG, one LMG, one Panzerfaust, two Panzerfaust and rifles. Second company is one LMG, one Panzerfaust, SMG, the rest of rifles. One 80mm, 81mm mortar. Uh, MG42 medium machine gun. An 88, led by Lieutenant Kruger. A Hanamag with a light machine gun. And Sergeant Roth in the 
Panzer IV. German reinforcements are again all veteran. We have three Panthers from the 12th Panzer Regiment led by Lieutenant Schneider, all from 2nd Company. We have Captain Montz and two men from the again 15th uh, Panzer Grenadier Regiment. We have number one company with two LMGs, one SMG, the rest of rifles. Number two company, two LMGs, one SMG, the rest of rifles and the Panzerfaust. And the third company, um, again, two LMGs, one SMG and the third is the Panzerfaust. The British forces are all regular and they are made up of the 2nd Battalion, the Duke of Gibson Regiment, led by Left Cap Captain Sybottom. There's Lieutenant Harding and two men, one with an SMG, one with a rifle. Second Lieutenant Hill, again, both with SMG. The HQ Company, Piat, Medic, Spotter, 2-inch Mortar. And we have four companies, A, B, C and D, all 10 men, one SMG, one LMG and the rest are rifles. We have a Vickers medium machine gun, a Bren carrier as transport, and two mortars with spotters. We have three Sherman tanks from the 25th Lancers, led by Lieutenant Elland, Sergeant Francis in the Firefly, and Sergeant Morley. We have an artillery spotter and air support spotter and a typhoon waiting to come in. Okay, so the Germans deploy with the first company on the right flank. Lieutenant Kruger and the flat gun closely positioned behind the, uh, the buildings and the wood Next to Lieutenant Muller. Second company also dug in. The Panzer IV of Sergeant Roth. The mortar with the spotter in the building. And the medium machine gun team set up in the building with a line of fire down the street towards the woods. Okay, turn one. And as the Germans make themselves ready in the morning, as dawn is breaking, they are suddenly struck by a massive British bombardment. The bombardment comes in and plasters the German positions with every unit taking pins and the flat gun and second company also taking casualties. Okay, the first dice out of the bag is British and Sergeant Morley advances on in the Sherman and opens fire with the two Besser machine guns on second company dug in in the woods. The Germans dug in do not go down. It's going to be 10 shots, needing 6s. OK, the Sherman fires. Each best machine gun is medium machine gun, counts as 5 shots. The Sherman's moved, <clears throat> so it's 4. The Germans are dug in, so that's 5, 6. 10 shots in total, needing 6s. That's 1 hit, so that's an extra pin on the Germans. However, they are veteran. So toughness of five, but they are dug in. Gives it a plus one, same as hard cover from the buildings. Needing a six to wound. No hits, but an extra pin on the unit. A British die again. And Sergeant Francis advances onto the table. Spies the Panzer IV in the village. And opens fire. The Firefly is moved, so it's going to be plus one. The Panzer IV is in the road, is in full view on that angle. So it's a four to hit. And that's a hit. The Panzer IV's defence is a plus nine. The Firefly has a 17 pounder, super heavy, which has a penetration value of seven. Does it penetrate? Yes, it does. Seven plus three equals 10. Rolling for damage on the Panzer IV. And it's blown. What a start for the British. Finally, a German die, and 2nd Company perform a rally order. 
passing its uh, leadership and removing all its pins. Another German and first company do the same, passing its leadership test, rallying and losing all of its pins. German again, and the flat gun also rallies and loses all of its pins. British, and Lieutenant Ellen advances on, sees the Germans in the building, and opens fire with the HE and the bow machine gun. We'll resolve the HE shot first. It's plus one for moved. No other modifiers firing at a building, needing a four to hit it. It misses. And again, the bow or hull machine gun opens fire. It's moved. Small team, hard cover, gonna need sevens. One possible. That's a hit, so at least a pin on that unit. Okay, the Germans are veteran. Normally save on a five in a building, adds to it plus one, so a six to cause a casualty. No casualties, but one extra pin on the unit. German die, and of course, the medium machine gun unit uh, took a rally order, passed its test, and lost all its pins. German and the mortar team likewise rally, passes uh, the order, and loses its solitary pin. German and Lieutenant Muller rallies, passes his leadership test and loses his only pin. Another German and another rally, this time the Hanamag, passes its test and loses its pins. British and C Company now enter on the extreme right flank of the battlefield, also at the run, going as far as the Bocage before being stopped by the dense terrain. British die and the mortar team come onto the table at the run taking position and setting up behind the bocage. While the spotter enters into the wood, peering through his binoculars at the 88 beyond. British die and the artillery observer enters the wood and begins to take note of the German positions. Another British mortar team enters and begins to set up as their spotter also goes into the wood which is becoming very congested with spotters and artillery observers. The Germans have five of the dice left in the bag but no units to uh, to order as obviously the Panzer IV was destroyed earlier on. So all their uh, remaining dice get allocated to units off table and are rolled down. Okay so the remaining British dice saw the uh, two inch mortar team come on and try and land a shell in the centre to try and obscure the view of the MMG team. It missed and using the scatter dice and 2d6 it landed 7 inches away. But still not a bad position. Captain Sybottom also advanced onto the table taking up position behind the wood. And on the left flank Lieutenant Harding and B Company also advanced onto the table. So the end of the first turn sees the British primarily advancing in two prongs. The Germans this turn, because of the bombardment, spent much of it rallying. But there was a bit of a disaster at the beginning when the Panzer IV of Sergeant Roth was destroyed by the Firefly. On to turn two. The first die was British and Captain Sybottom issued a snap to, ordering all his observers to open fire. The two mortars will target the 88, and the artillery observer also has called in coordinates for a bombardment on the next turn, very close to the 88 and Captain Muller. The first mortar fires at the 88, and the 88 goes down, needing a six. That's a miss. The second mortar also fires at the 88, needing a 6, and that's a miss, but both mortars need 5 next turn. Both mortars missed, needing a 5 next turn, Lieutenant Kruger and the gun went down. However, note where the artillery observer has called in the position of the strike, if successful on the next turn. Very close to the 88, and Lieutenant Muller, and the Hanamag. German die. And the mortar spotter can see the British infantry advancing across the field. Gives coordinates to the mortar and it opens fire. 
Needs a six to hit. Oh, that's nearly. B Company have a lucky escape, but it's going to be a five plus next turn. I forgot to mention, at the start of the turn, uh, a one was rolled and the smoke round uh, dispersed within the village. British and Lieutenant Elland advances closer into the village. He opens fire this time with two machine guns on the Germans in the house. The Germans do not go down and are going to receive a hail of bullets from the two Besser medium machine guns. Okay, the Sherman has 10 shots needing sixes. Plus one for moving and plus two for hard cover. The medium machine gun is a three man crew and not a small team as I'd previously thought. So 10 shots needing sixes to hit. And that's two hits, so that's a pin on the unit at least. Now again, the Germans are veteran. So they're fives normally to wound, but plus one for hard cover. So sixes to wound. No casualties, but a pin on the unit. British and Lieutenant Harding orders a snap two and orders D and B Company, along with himself, to run up to the Bocage on the left flank of the village. A British die yet again, and this time C Company advance over the Bocage and advance towards the right flank of the village. German dice and first company run up to the Bocage hedge line facing the British over the road. Looks like there's going to be a bit of a savage hedge fight coming soon in the next turn. British and Sergeant Morley advances still keeping his tank behind the, the Bocage shielded from the 88 and opens fire with both machine guns on the German unit dug in. Ten shots Needing sixes. Again, the Germans do not go down. That's three hits. So that's a pin on the unit at least. Again, it's going to be sixes to cause any casualties because of the, uh, the fact they're dug in. And that's no casualties but a pin on the unit. German and number two company pass its order test, lose its pin and run forward towards the Sherman. May seem a risky move, but if they can get the first die on the next turn, they can advance to within point blank of the Sherman and they have a Panzerfaust. A risk worth taking. Another disaster for the Germans. The medium machine gun team attempted to pass its order to open fire on the spotters in the wood. However, it rolled a foobar and then a three meaning it has to run away from the closest visible unit being the Sherman and 12 inches takes it off the table so not only does the unit remove itself from the table an order was given to it the Germans also lose an order die another disaster on the left flank of the Germans German die and Lieutenant Muller runs to break cover and joins two company to give it some support in the following turn and also distance himself from the possible incoming bombardment. German again, and the Hanamag this time also moves itself away from the possible incoming British bombardment. The Germans have no further units to order this turn, so the five remaining dice are placed on the units off table, all going down. On the next turn, these units can enter. Okay, so the two remaining uh, British dice the Piat team enter the uh, the battle uh, at the run, coming up behind the, the Bocage. And Sergeant Francis pivots his Firefly, advances into the wood and opens fire with the turret machine gun onto the Germans of number two company advancing across the field. It's a Firefly, it doesn't have a hull medium machine gun. The German unit's already moved, it can't go down, so it's going to be five shots with the medium machine gun on the second company in the open. Okay, five shots needing fives. Plus one for moving and plus one for long range. And that's one hit. So that's a pin on the unit. Cannot return into a casualty. No casualties, but a pin on the second company. That could be crucial in the next turn. Okay, the end of uh, turn two. And on the right flank, uh, the British certainly seems to be having uh, some success, whether by design or luck. 
in the centre. It's going to be uh, interesting who gets the first uh, die for the next turn. And on the left flank of the British, again, there's quite a lot of uh, infantry massing there. Could be quite crucial who gets uh, the first few dice out the bag. Of course, on turn three, the German reinforcements can start to uh, arrive, providing they uh, pass their leadership test to uh, come on the board. But we will find out. On to turn three. Okay, the start of turn three. Does the artillery barrage come in? It's delayed. With that delay, the observer has taken advantage of the opportunity to move the aiming point and has moved it away from the 88, closer to the second company and the HQ company with Lieutenant Muller. Will it come in on the next turn? The first die was British. And Sergeant Morley advances to within point blank to open fire on second company, who have no choice but to go down and pray as they're about to be hit by 10 shots from two medium machine guns at point blank. 10 shots needing fives. It was plus one for moving, but then that minus one for being point blank. But second company, the Germans have gone down, that adds plus two, so it's 10 shots needing fives. That's two, three, four hits. So that's another pin on the unit. Four hits, needing fives. And that's one casualty. And another pin. Overall, not too bad for the Germans. It could have been worse. British die. And Lieutenant Harding orders a snap to. Ordering B Company to face to its right to cover from the right flank and D Company to advance along with himself over the hedge line to within point blank of the Germans and opening fire on them. The Germans do not go down. Well, this is a gamble for the Germans, but we'll see if it pays off. The British are going to get 20 shots. The Bren has four shots. There are three um, figures with Sten guns. Sergeant Wilfred, Lieutenant Harding and the Corporal accompanying Lieutenant Harding. Uh, there are eight riflemen. Uh, and on top of that, for every every three, using the rapid fire rule, that's an extra two shots. So in total, there's 20 shots coming the Germans' way, needing fives. Although the point blank, they have moved, and the point blank takes it down to three. Because there's intervening bocage, I'm going to count it as hard cover. So 20 shots, needing fives for the British. First ten. So that's one, two, three, four. So that's four shots so far. Four hits. Five, six, seven. Seven hits. Seven hits, needing fives. And that's two hits, two, two wounds, two casualties. Potentially one special. And it's not. So that's two casualties to the first company and a pin. That's not bad considering how many shots came their way. German die and the spotter has seen D Company cross the hedge and engage First Company in a firefight and orders the mortar to fire, needing a six. Six required, and it's a miss, but a five next turn if D Company don't move. German die, and the first of the reinforcements. The Panther, commanded by Sergeant Schmidt, advances through the wood to take aim against the Sherman, but realises only at the last minute his own troops are in the way and he can't fire. British die, and Captain Sidebottom orders another snap too. He orders Sergeant Francis to advance further through the wood and open fire on the Germans, and he orders both spotters for the mortars to order the mortars to immediately fire on the 88. The Firefly opens fire on the German infantry uh, with its turret machine gun needing sixes. Plus one for moving, and the German unit already down, so that adds plus two. So five shots, needing sixes, and that's no hits. Both mortars now fire at the 88 and its crew, needing fives. One hit. Okay, so the mortar is a uh, two-inch template, but it's going to get three of the crew. And that's two dead. Does the gun go? 
nope but it also gets d3 pins and that's two pins so on the next turn one mortar strikes on anything but a one and the other mortar needs a four german die and another german reinforcement another panther advances on the far left of the german flank panther 236 commanded by sergeant huber and he opens fire on c company who we can see advancing towards the village with both his hull and turret machine guns c company very wisely go down okay the panther's actually going to get 12 shots obviously it's got two medium machine guns but counting hitler's buzzsaw getting plus one it is going to be seven pluses though um, because the uh, it advanced too a little bit too far forward so it advanced on nine inches which just puts it just over on into, into long range um, so again it's going to be uh, 12 shots needing sevens uh, against the, uh, the British infantry that's one possible no no hits wise move by the British to go down another German die and another panther this time the commander of second company Lieutenant Schneider himself advances into the woods taking no chances spies the firefly opposite and opens fire the panther fires needing a five it's moved itself that's a plus one and the firefly is still in the wood so gets a plus one for soft cover one shot needing a five that's a cock dice it's a miss British die and Lieutenant Elland pushes cautiously through the rubble with his Sherman and spots the panther lurking around the corner and takes a shot it's going to be a tough shot because the panther is going to be counted as in hard cover and partially visible Sherman needs a six to hit it's missed German and Lieutenant Muller runs into one of the ruined buildings to try and get some cover German and more German reinforcements this time as number one company run onto the battlefield German and number one company passes its order test loses its pin and returns fire at the British on the opposite side of the hedge okay the Germans fire back needing fours they get 11 shots five for the LMG four rifles and two for the single SMG and it's point blank range but the British are in hard cover so it goes down from three to two but then back up to four 11 shots needing fours that's six hits the British are regulars so needing only fours for casualties and that's three two of which could be special and there is there's one so the Bren gun is going to go from D Company. Good return of fire from the Germans with the British suffering three casualties and losing the company Bren. British and the Pier team run up into the village. German and the flat gun rallies, passes its order test and removes all its pins. British again and the two inch mortar team run up to take position behind the bocage final two dice are german but rather than bring any more units onto a congested battlefield just yet with an imminent uh, british bombardment coming in the final two order dice are put on units off table and are down onto turn four okay the end of uh, turn three and this is becoming a very chaotic and confused battle whoever gets the first die in turn four could be crucial also if the uh, British bombardment comes in when it's centered there there are now quite a few German units that may be struck on to turn four Turn four begins 
with the British bombardment. Does it come in? It's delayed again. British and Lieutenant Harding orders a snap to and a withdrawal uh, of D Company from the, uh, behind the hedge engaging the Germans for fear of a possible uh, mortar strike by the Germans. He withdraws along with D Company behind the hedge and orders B Company to run around and uh, take up positions behind uh, some of the ruined buildings. German and 2nd Company pass its order, lose a pin and open fire with the Panzerfaust on the Sherman. Panzerfaust needs a three to hit, it's point blank, but they have got a pin, needing a three. It missed! British and Captain Sidebottom again orders a snap to, ordering the Firefly to fire back at the Panther in the wood and ordering both mortar spotters to direct their mortars again at the 88. This could be quite a crucial fire stage. First of all the mortar firing on the flat gun needing anything but a one and that's a hit and the other mortar firing needing a four and that's hit, that's two hits with two mortars. First one to each template that we can get three figures in and that's two dead. Second one and that's another dead. So that's the 88 put out of action with all the crew killed. Sergeant Francis now fires at the Panther needing just a four and it's a miss. German and Lieutenant Schneider fires straight back at the Firefly also needing a four. A four to hit. It does. Does it penetrate? The Sherman is a nine. The Panther has a super heavy anti-tank gun, that's a 7. It penetrates. What's the damage to the Sherman? It's destroyed. With a deafening crack, the Sherman Firefly is destroyed and the British also lose a command eye as it had been already ordered this turn. British and Lieutenant Elland fires again at the Panther skulking behind the building. The Sherman shoots, needing a five. It's a plus two for the hard cover and partially obscured. And it's a miss. German die. And Sergeant Schmidt advances out of the wood so he can fully see and engage the Sherman. His line of sight no longer blocked by his own troops. So four to hit. It's not quite point blank, but the Panther has moved. It's a miss. British die and Sergeant Morley can't traverse his turret quick enough and fires back at the Panther. The Sherman fires back, needing only a three. It's a miss. German and Sergeant Huber cautiously advances at the side of the building and fires back at the Sherman while its hull machine gun opens fire again at C Company, who go down. First of all, the machine gun fire at the British infantry. Six shots needing sixes. That's one hit. So that's a pin on the unit. Any casualties? Yes, one casualty and a pin on that unit. The main gun now fires at the Sherman. That's also a six. It's moved, but there is intervening hard cover. So it's a six to hit. It's hit. Can it penetrate? Again, the Sherman's a nine. The Panther is a super heavy anti-tank gun with a seven. No, it's a glancing blow. Rolling for damage. So again, that's the, the crew stunned and it's one additional pin and the tank would go down, but it's already fired. British die. And the Piat team run into the house overlooking the Panther. German and the mortar spotter can see the British infantry behind the buildings, gives coordinates and the mortar opens fire. Mortar fires needing a six and it's a miss but it's a five next turn. German die. Now more reinforcements this time number two company enter the table at a run. German again and this time Captain Mons himself enters the, uh, the battlefield. 
German reinforcements are piling on now and they're loading the uh, the left flank of the battlefield. The Hanamag now pivots and advances towards the first company lining the hedge. British die and A company off the table go down. Final two German die and number one company pull back from the, the hedgerow firefight with the British and the mortar team off table go down. That's the end of turn four and the action has become very uh, very chaotic, very confused. German reinforcements making a big difference when they've come on the table with the firefly being destroyed. And on the left flank, the Germans are loading the position, ready to flood the houses and gain victory points. Turn five is going to be crucial with whoever gets the first die and will the British barrage finally come in. On to turn five. Turn five and rolling for the barrage. Surely it's got to come in this time. It does, finally. How big is the radius? Six plus, six 12 inches. That could be quite, uh, quite critical for the Germans. Well, the barrage comes in and with a 12 inch radius, hits the both Panthers, the infantry, the Sherman, and the infantry in the house. Okay, rolling for whether the hits on each one. The Far Panther, no. Panther in the wood, yes. The infantry unit, no. The Sherman, no. Infantry in the building, no. Okay, I'll work out the pins and work out the damage on the uh, Panther in the wood. Okay, the result of the barrage, nobody was destroyed. Uh, Lieutenant uh, Schneider um, was hit, ended up with two pins, the crew stunned and they are down for this turn. Everybody else ended up with pins, Lieutenant Muller had two pins, uh, second company got three pins, putting them up to four, and the Panther and Sherman both had two pins. Could have been a lot worse, but still uh, concentrated barrage. First eyes German and Sergeant Schmidt passes his order test, loses a pin, advances to point blank with the Sherman on its flank and opens fire. It's a four to hit. It's moved, but it's point blank, but it has a pin. It's a miss. It's a British die, and Lieutenant Elland is gonna try and pass his order test and fire at the Panther. And he passes leadership test. It's a brave move, seven or under. He does. It's gonna be a six to hit. That's one for the pin and two for hard cover. He does. The Sherman's penetration is five. Uh, it's the front of the Panther, so that counts as a ten. So he's going to need a five for a glancing shot and a one to penetrate and a six to penetrate. At least he hits it. It's a glancing shot. Well, that's at least one pin on the Panther. Now it's a superficial hit. See what damage can be done. So let's roll again. That's a three. So it's going to be the crew's going to be stunned. And it's going to be an additional pin marker, and and the uh, it's going to go down. So that's all in all, that's not bad. That was a great bit of uh, luck and shooting by the British. The Panther now has two pins and he's down and can take no further action this turn. The British die again, and this time the Piat team are going to fire into the side of the Panther. It's not long range. They only need a three. Does the Piat hit? It does. The pier penetrates on a five. It's the Panther's side armour. So that's another plus one or minus one. So he's going to be needing a three or more. It's a superficial hit to the side armour. Rolling for the damage. So it's going to be an additional pin. And again, the crew's going to go down. The pier team was unlucky not to do more damage to the Panther. But still, three pins. It's yet another British die and B Company this time, run into the uh, one of the ruined buildings, at least gaining a victory point. Finally a German die, and third company run into one of the buildings, taking up position, ready for the next turn, and they do have a Panzerfaust. British and Sergeant Morley and his crew go to fire back at the Panther as they frantically try and reload the gun. Got to pass the leadership test. It's going to be a seven or under. Can they fire? 
Yes, they can. It's point blank, but they've got one pin now. It's a three. They hit. Can they penetrate? Sherman, same as the P, penetration of five. It's going to be side armour. Oh, they definitely do. Rolling for full damage. The Panther explodes. Lucky die rolling by the British, but that could be a game changer. The Panther explodes and is on fire, and the Germans lose another command die. German and Captain Muntz orders the mortar team to fire at the Sherman, which it does and misses. He also orders second company to advance into the wood, positioning itself for a potential attack on the Sherman or the Piat team. He also moves himself closer to the Panther to assist it with its leadership test in the next turn. British and Lieutenant Harding orders D Company uh, as well as his, himself to advance up to the Bocage and open fire on the Germans in the house. It's going to be rifles only though. The British are going to get nine shots, seven riflemen plus the two extra for the rapid fire. Um, they are long range, the Germans are in hard cover and they've moved. It's going to be sevens only. That's four possible. And that's one hit, so it's a pin on the unit at least. Do they do any damage? It's going to be a six because they're in hard cover. No. So it's one pin on the Germans. So they're now up to three in that house. British and C Company pass their order test, lose the pin and run into the building facing the Germans. British and Captain Sidebottom orders a snap to. He himself advances through the wood, putting him closer to Sergeant Morley's tank, and orders both mortars to open fire on the Germans. Both mortars fire, miss, but needing five on the next turn. British and the two-inch mortar try to drop a smoke round right in front of the Panther. Uh, it, it failed, uh, and on the uh, 2d6 and direction die, it actually came back seven inches. The last four dice in the bag were all German. Uh, number two company tried to uh, rally. It failed and went down. Number one company ran into the building, taking up positions. Again, that unit has two uh, light machine guns. The first company of the 90th Grenadiers ran up to uh, the Bocage. Again, in readiness for firing the next turn. And the Hanamag advanced up to the Bocage and will fire with its light machine gun on the British in the building opposite. Six shots. It's not long range, but the British are in hard cover and the Hanamag has moved. So it's six shots needing sixes. That's two hits, so that's a pin on that unit at least. Can they convert those hits into casualties? Needing fours? No, they don't, but a pin on the British unit. Well, that's the end of turn five. It uh, saw some, uh, some quite a bit of movement and some decisive action potentially in the centre with the Panther being destroyed. There's quite a lot of points up for grabs in turn six and this battle is probably still in the balance. On to turn six. At the start of turn six, crucially, the first die was British and Lieutenant Elland passed his order test, reversed uh, and then opened fire with both machine guns, the hull and turret, on the Germans in the house. It's going to be ten shots. It's ten shots, needing sevens. The Germans go down. They can't take any offensive action this turn, but they do secure the house and a victory point. So ten shots, needing sevens. That's one possible. No. So the Germans do go down, but they are secure in their position in the house. German and second company advance. They are going to open fire on the Sherman with the Panzerfaust, while the rest of the unit are going to open fire on the British Piat team in the building. The Panzerfaust shoots, needing a five. It's plus one for moving, and it's also seven inches, so just over uh, half range. And it hits the Sherman. Does the Panzerfaust penetrate, causing damage? No, it doesn't. The Sherman has a really lucky escape, but has now two pins. Okay, the Germans open fire 
on the Piat team in the building. They go down, so they're going to be a small team in hard cover, and the Germans have moved. So again, we're going to need seven pluses. There's a lot of fire coming the British way, so you never know. First of all, the two light machine guns firing, so that's 12 dice, again, needing seven pluses. It's one cock die, so that's quite a few potentials. I'm going to roll the cocks one again. Nope. So that's six potentials. And that's one hit. Does it... Does the hit convert to a casualty? It's going to be the regulars, but they are in a hard uh, building, so it's hard cover, so it's going to be a five. No, they don't. Four rifles fire. Moving sevens plus. And finally, no. the SMG. Oh, two possibles. One hit. Can they turn it into a casualty? No, they don't. So only one pin on the Piat team. British die. And Sergeant Morley, with the morale bonus of Captain Cybottom being within 12 inches, passes his command test, loses a pin, reverses, and now opens fire with both machine guns at the German unit that just attacked it. Ten shots at the Germans, uh, needing fours for the uh, Sherman reversing. The Germans have already formed an action. They can't go down, so it's going to be fours to kill. Ten shots. That's not very good shooting from the Sherman. That's a total of three hits. So it's a pin on the unit at least. They are veterans, needing fives to wound. Two potential uh, criticals. No. So that's one pin and two casualties. German and Sergeant Huber passes his order test, loses a pin, and he's going to open fire on the British in the building at very close range. He's going to open fire with his whole machine gun, but he's going to fire the main gun at the building. C Company in the building, for their part, go down in readiness. Machine gun fire first for the Panther. It's six shots. The British have gone down. They're in hard cover. So even though it's quite close range, it's going to be seven to cause injuries. And that's no hits. The main gun fires at the building. HE. That's a hit. The Panther's gun's super heavy, so it gets two D6 hits on targets in the building. That's 12, so that's six because it's rounded down because they did go down. So that's six potential casualties. Again, super heavy, penetration of three. They're only regular, anything but. So that's three casualties and four pins in total. The British infantry took some heavy fire, but they're still there. There's a German die next, and the mortar open fired on the reversing Sherman. Missed, and it would need a five next turn. British and Captain Sidebottom orders a snap to, instructing the mortars to both open fire again at the Germans. Going to be needing fives to hit. The Germans go down. Both mortars fire, needing fives. That's one hit. Okay, it's a two-inch template. They will get four figures there, uh, but again, the unit's gone down, so rounding down. It's going to be two, anything but. That's one hit. Two hits. So that's two casualties, and... I have an extra pin. The second company have taken quite a lot of casualties. They've not been able to uh, inflict any damage on the British. And if anything, their positions actually blocked some of their own troops from uh, firing at key times. German, and to secure the house, Captain Monts uh, runs in to again gain at least one victory point for the Germans. British and Lieutenant Harding orders a snap to. He himself moves, advances to the Bocage to open fire on the Germans in the house opposite. He orders D and B Company, who passes its leadership test with his bonus losing its pin, to both open fire on the Germans occupying the house across the road. The Germans in the house go down, so it's going to be quite a lot of shots needing sevens. The Germans in the house opposite Lieutenant Harding stay as they are. Lieutenant Harding, the accompanying Sten and rifle open fire on the Germans in the house needing sevens. One possible. Again, it's seven because they've moved. The Germans are in hard cover and they are firing over six inches. So it's certainly long range for the SMGs. And that's no hits. 
Okay, D Company firing first. They've got seven rifles, so get plus two for the rapid fire. And again, they're needing sevens. That's two possible. And that's one hit. So that's another pin on the unit. Again, it's going to be sixes to uh, casualties. No. B Company now fire. Uh, we'll do the SMG first. And it's going to be just two shots needing sevens. That's no. Okay, we've now got 11 shots coming in from B Company. That's four from the Bren and the rest of the rifles. That's one potential. And we also get three extra rifle shots for the rapid fire. So that's two potentials. No. Final British die and the two inch mortar team run up behind the Sherman. Okay, the final three dice are German. And the first company, the Hanamag, and first company of 15th Panzer Grenadier Regiment are all going to open fire on the British in the house with a view to putting as many casualties on as they can on them to force them into a morale test. It's going to be 32 shots on the whole needing fives um, and sixes because the British are in hard cover. I'll roll the shots and see what, uh, what the outcome is. Okay, so the 10 shots from the two light machine guns of uh, number one company all missed two shots from the smg needing sixes missed and finally five rifle shots again from the first company needing fives that's better that's three possible hits the hanamag will open fire again five hits needing fives that's one so we're up to four in total. The light machine gun and five riflemen from the first company of the 90th needing fives. Much better. So that's four hits plus six, eight, 10, 11, 11 hits. So that's three pins on the British unit from the three separate um, units firing and the count 11 cash hits needing fives to turn them into casualties and again that's that's not bad that's one two that's six with two potential critical nope so that's six hits on that unit which may be a morale test Okay, the British unit actually stay where they are with three pins uh, because I should have calculated the casualties each unit firing at them uh, to see if it caused more than half of that shooting phase uh, to force them into a morale test. Uh, so they actually they stay where they are with three pins and, and that brings us to the end of the battle. Let's add up the points and see who's won. Okay, so at the end of turn six, the Germans have five victory points. They have one for each unit in this house here, so that's two. They have three for occupying this house, four for occupying this house, and they have knocked out the Sherman. They've only destroyed one British unit. So that's a total of five points for the Germans. Well, by my calculation, the British have scored seven victory points. They occupy two houses, and another one here, making three. They've knocked out a Panther, a Panzer IV, the medium machine gun team that was originally in the building that was forced off the table and the 88 that was also knocked out giving the british a grand total of seven so for the first time in battle the duke of gibson regiment have done quite well right that brings us to the end thank you uh, everyone for watching if you stay to the end i'm sure there'll be quite a few watching will be uh, quite scornful of some of my tactics but again this is just a game i do it for fun and hopefully it will give um, give people some ideas um uh, not only in games but in, in modeling or setting the tables up as well for example the smoke uh, rounds that i use here again i stick them to pringle bases because they're three inches and they're quite handy um I won't be doing another video um, for a couple of months now because I've got a holiday and I do plan on trying to get some more uh, more buildings done. Um, as I say, later on in the year, uh, I'm looking to potentially put on a uh, display game, certainly at Recon in Leeds, but certainly aiming towards next year of uh, putting some display games on with the, uh, the, the Leeds Night Owls. 
again i hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and i hope maybe some of the um uh, some of it has, has helped you if you're new to the game for those that are experienced i'm probably sure you're all sat there shaking your head but thank you uh, thank you all for watching and see you next time